for today and our quest we will keep a sharp look out of the barriers that keeping you from learning English with is I'm your teacher Annalie and I will be with you every step of the way oh we are joined today with our friend Dora hi Dora could you help us review our lesson that we had last week I would love to great we have discussed last week about composing inverted sentence with correct subject verb agreement. We have learned that in an inverted sentence, the verb comes first before the subject. The nouns that serves as the subject may either be in singular or plural in form. Remember to keep in mind when the subject is singular, it must take a singular verb. When the subject is plural, it must take a plural verb. A verb must agree with its subject. In number, in person, even when the sentence is in inverted order. Again, singular subject takes a singular verb, while plural subject takes plural verb in that manner. Now, let's check your assignment. Directions. Find out if the subject and verbs agree in the following inverted sentences. Copy the sentence if the subject and the verb agree with each other. Otherwise, rewrite the sentence with the correct subject-verb agreement. Number one. There is five students in the library. Let's figure out the subject in the sentence. The subject is students. Students is a regular plural noun. And the predicate is, is in the library. As you can see, the linking verb is, does not agree with the number of subject. It should be, there are five students in the library to make the sentence correct. Number two, inside my pocket are my red pen. Let's identify the subject in the sentence. Correct, pen. Since the word pen does not have the suffix s, it is a regular singular noun. Now identify the predicate in the sentence. Inside my pocket r is the predicate. The linking verb r does not agree with a number of subject. It should be Inside my pocket is my red pen. Our third sentence is, In front of the television sits my two cousins. What are we talking about in that sentence? That's right, cousins. Since the word cousins has the suffix s, it is a regular plural noun. noun. Now let's find out the predicate in that sentence. Correct. In front of the television sits. Now, let's identify the verb used in that sentence. Sits. Sits is a singular linking verb and it does not agree with the subject cousins. It should be sit. So, the correct is in front of the television sit my two cousins. I hope you are all doing okay. Now, let's proceed to number four. The sentence is, under the table are our cat. We are talking about cat in that sentence. Now, what type of noun is cat? Correct. Cat is a regular singular noun. The predicate in that sentence is, under the table are. Now, does the linking verb are agree with our subject cat? Correct. It does not agree. It should be is. To make the sentence correct, under the table is our cat. 
Now, let's proceed to our last number, number 5. In the classroom was some old desk. We are talking about desk in that sentence. So, the subject is desk. It is a regular plural noun. And the predicate is, that's right, in the classroom was. Now, let's identify if the linking verb used in that sentence agree with our subject desk. Oh, correct. It does not agree. It should be where. It should be where to make the sentence correct. In the classroom were some old tests. What score did you get? If you get four and above, I would like to commend you for the job well done. If you get lower than that, you may reread your previous lesson and do the unanswered activity in your module. Remember, I never lost confidence with you, my explorer peoples. Are you excited of what's in store for us today? Oh wait, we are joined today by our friend Dora. Hi Dora, good morning. Good morning, Teacher Anneli, and good morning to our Explorer pupils. It's nice to see you. It's a pleasure to see you. Where are we going today? We will be seeing top tourist spots in Luzon, the Visayas, and Mindanao. Wow, that's exciting. Since we are still in a COVID-19 pandemic, we should still follow the health protocol. We should not forget to wear our face mask and face shield and always bring with us our sanitizer and don't forget to keep social distancing are you ready dora yes i'm ready are you ready my exploring pupils oh that's great to make this adventure more fun exciting and challenging you have to do some tasks you have to surpass all the challenges before you can reach our destination. Are you okay with that? That's great. Let's go. Challenge number one. You have to guess What's inside my backpack? Are you ready? Come on! have in my backpack is sweet. Your mother will not allow you to go to bed without brushing your teeth if you eat it. Correct! It's candy! The next item is thick. It has a number of pages and I love to read my favorite story in it. Correct! The book! Congratulations! You did it! We did it! We did it! We did it! Hooray! Wow! It's so nice! I feel as if we go back in old times. Look at the houses. Are they beautiful to see? I agree. Cali Crisologo is a street where Spanish structures can be found. Most of what we can see here were houses of rich families and Chinese Filipino traders. Wow, that's amazing. I'm excited for our next stop. Challenge number two. Instruction. Analyze each word if it is an adjective or not. The words are book. Cleanse, write, study, delicious, pretty, and wonderful. 
That's right! From the given words, the adjectives are pretty, delicious, and wonderful. You did it! Look over there! Oh! Is that Magellan's Cross? Yes! Magellan's Cross is historical. It resembles the cross planted by Ferdinand Magellan when he arrived here in Cebu. Thank you for sharing. Where is our last stop? Challenge number three. Use your mathematical skills to identify the words being defined. The first word is the people of Spain. Correct. The word is Spanish. Second one. Based on history, arranged in order the things happen. Correct. The word is historical. And the last, number three, someone who climbed mountain. Correct. The word is climber. You did it, my explorer pupils. You can now proceed to your next destination. Where is our last stop? Here, to the highest mountain in the Philippines. Oh. Is that Mount Apple? That's right! Mount Apple is well known to mountain climbers too. They say it will take you more than three days to climb it. I see. Oh, finally, we're back in our classroom. Did you enjoy our journey to the different places in the Philippines? That's great, my explorer pupils. From the trip we had a while ago, we use adjectives in the sentences. Can you read them? Can you identify the adjectives used in the sentences? But before that, let's review what an adjective is. An adjective is a word that modifies a noun or a pronoun. It tells us what kind, which one, how many, how much, and whose. As a modifier, an adjective makes a noun or a pronoun more specified by describing or limiting it. For example, Cali Crisologo is a street where Spanish structures can be found. What structures can be found in Cali Crisologo? That is right, Spanish. Spanish modifies the noun structures. Do you notice that Spanish is written in capital letter? It is because it is a proper adjective. A proper adjective is an adjective formed from a proper noun. Let's review what a proper noun is. A proper noun is a name of a particular person, place, or thing. It always begins with a capital letter. In the case of the proper adjective, Spanish, it derives from from the proper noun Spain. Let us have the second sentence. Magellan's cross is historical. What kind of cross is the Magellan's cross? Correct, it is historical. Historical is an adjective. It modifies Magellan's cross. Have you noticed the adjective historical appears after the subject and the linking verb? This is because historical is a predicate adjective. A predicate adjective is an adjective that follows a linking verb and modifies the subject. Our final sentence is, Mount Apple is well known to mountain climbers too. Could you figure out what the adjective in the sentence is? Yes, well known. It describes Mount Apple as a mountain that is popular with mountain climbers. Well, known is an adjective composed of two words, well and known. 
joined by a hyphen. This means that well-known is a compound adjective. A compound adjective can be used in a subject or a predicate portion of a sentence. A compound adjective is an adjective made of two words that modifies the same noun. The three adjectives that we discussed are proper adjective, compound adjective, and predicate adjective. Let's now go to our next activity. Let's see if you can figure out what adjectives are used in the different sentences. Number one. From the carvings on its wooden doors, San Agustin Church has a Mexican interior that everyone should see. What type of adjective is Mexican? Correct. Mexican is a proper adjective. Mexican comes from a proper noun, Mexico. Number two. The Tubataha Reef is popular as a diving site in the Philippines because of its coral walls. What type of adjective is popular? That is right. Adjective popular comes after the linking verb is, so we call it as a predicate adjective. Number three. A shrimp catching expedition with bamboos and nets followed by a dinner of the cook catch is also available when one visits Don Sol. What type of adjective is shrimp catching? Yes, shrimp catching is a compound adjective. We have two words, shrimp and catching, joined by a hyphen. Number four, the Chocolate Hills has same sized mounds located in Carmen Bohol. What type of adjective is same size? Very good. It is also a compound adjective modifying the noun mounds. Number five. The Banawa Rice Terraces is a magnificent example of farm terraces resembling steps going up to the sky. What type of adjective is magnificent? An adjective magnificent is part of the predicate in the sentence place after the verb is. If predicate adjective is your answer, you got it right. How many correct answers did you get? A mistake is fine. But if you get more than that, let's have this next activity so that you will not be down in doldrums. I know you can do better through practice. Directions. Determine the type of adjectives in the paragraph. The Philippines is a tropical haven in the Pacific. It is gifted with an abundance of natural wonders and awe-inspiring beaches. Each of its islands is unique, yet all of them offer exquisite places to swim, to eat, and to learn about the rich history of the country. Centuries-old churches and old houses are a fascination too. They display Western influence and aesthetics that have stood the test of time. Time is up. The adjectives in the paragraph are tropical, awe-inspiring, unique, centuries-old, and western. Now let's find out what these adjectives are. Tropical is a predicate adjective. Awe-inspiring is a compound adjective. Unique is a predicate adjective. Centuries-old is a compound adjective. And Western is a proper adjective. How did you do with identifying adjective? I can say that you're on the right track if you had no mistake. If you had two or more incorrect answers, you answer the rest of the activities in your module. Let us recap what you have learned from me today. An adjective is a word that modifies a noun and a pronoun. It tells us what kind which one, how many, how much, or whose. 
we studied three different forms of adjectives, proper, predicate, and compound. A proper adjective is an adjective formed from a proper noun. A predicate adjective is an adjective that follows a linking verb and modifies the subject. A compound adjective is an adjective with two words that modifies the same noun. And this will be your assignment for today. Directions. Compose your own sentence using these adjectives. Filipino. Colorful. Brightly colored. European. And diverse. That ends our learning journey for today. Always remember that learning a language is not learning different words for the same thing, but it is learning another way to think about things. Till our next adventure! Bye!